Thank you all for tuning in to Politics, Religion, and Whiskey, the Josh Terry podcast, a top 100 podcast in the world, judged by Apple standards. Just found out that I'm like fucking number five in Christ Kazakhstan or whatever in fucking Asia. Uh, if you're listening to this right now, please don't be terrorists and try to murder me. Uh, I really hope you are cool ass Asians. I don't know anything about y'all. I looked up your national anthem. It's, uh, it's not bad. Just not America. Uh, tonight on the show, we are going to have a whole lot of fun, and this show is brought to you by uh, Par Hopper by Proud 90 Golf. Um, let's see who else we got. We got Williams Tire. We've got Nobles Networking. What else? I know I'm forgetting somebody. Who am I forgetting? The oh, you ones. Uh, and also our management company, Red Circle. Thank you for all that you do with the corporate sponsors. Uh, anyway, so Miss Kayla. Kayla has done a few shows with me now. We usually get fucked up. We talk shit. She tells everybody how bad she wants me. And uh, it's usually a good time. Oh, yeah. It's always a good time, actually. I mean, I'm, I, look, it's my fourth show, so I'm, I'm doing something right, I guess. I mean, either I look good or I'm, I'm funny. I'm sure it's not both, but, you know. You can't, um, be, no, you, I, you can't be You can't be both. That's what I said. I said I'm not, I, you can't do both. So, I mean, I guess. We'll just, we'll, we'll let everybody else decide which one that is. But You're, um, you're no, mediocre uh, at best. Mediocre at best. Well, you know what? Speaking at mediocre okay. at best, are also our another guest tonight. Just <laughs> fucking with you, Earl. Uh, for everybody who listens to the show, you know, about a month ago, my dad, uh, he, he broke his neck. And when he did, I made a TikTok saying, hey, I'm not lining shows up how I'm supposed to right now please tag people that you want to have on the show. That is actually where Kayla came from. And now another person from that post, um, Earl, the comedian, I think both, I think you're from Texas too, right? Yes, sir. Where in Texas oh. are you? I am in central Texas. I'm, in, I'm, I'm right by Fort Hood, an hour from Austin. What about you, Kayla? How close are you to him? Uh, I'm in central Texas. I'm like 45 minutes from, um, and that's where Kayla gets disconnected. And I have to cuss her redheaded ass out. So until she gets back, <laughs> me and fucking Earl are just going to hang out. I bet she got a phone call. I bet her poor ass got a phone. There she goes. I was speaking no, very well I, of you. I, I, well, oh, please repeat it. I, you, you, very rarely do you talk good about me. Come on now. I know. I'm not supposed to. That's no fun. Uh, no, no, I'm 45 minutes from Waco. I didn't know if y'all heard that or not. Oh, yeah. Well, y'all are probably close to each other. This be yeah. good. Y'all be good to get to know each other. Uh, Earl, tell them a little about yourself. You've never been on the show before. You got some really good content on social media, and uh, let them know who you are before we get started with all this. Yes, sir. So, for those of you tuning in, my name is Earl, the comedian. I stand for love, laughter, and unity. We grow together like we go together. That's the mantra of all of, all of my following. I've amassed over forty thousand on TikTok and growing um basically on mine much like uh josh terry we just talk trash about each other but it's all in good fun it's all in good love and <clears throat> i stand firmly on love like i said love laughter and unity and bringing the world together um through the universal commonality of laughter anybody that can make other people laugh i'm cool with i don't give a fuck what you talk about putting smiles on people's faces that's a it's a big deal to me that's no, okay kayla just Fucking chime in whenever you want to. It's fine. I was what? <clears throat> pardon me. Let me get my microphone ready. No, um, I, I, <laughs> I 100 percent agree. For real, I agree. Um, like the other night or last night or not before. Um, I had no intentions of of going live, and I thought um you were live trying to hit your goal or whatever you know for for your dad to be able to start his treatments and all that and stuff. But your live had been sent to me by like I think it was like four different people and I was like well I'm gonna hop in here and see what's going on you were talking about doing that and I was like you know I can I'll go live and duel, duel him and see if I you know I can get my people and I, I didn't do it out of like um I didn't I, I wasn't gaining anything from that I wanted to do it because to see people you know a smile on people's faces so I think making people laugh and put a smile on their face in any way you can is great whether it be funny talking shit to each other cracking jokes or doing something good and, and stuff like that so I agree 100 percent well, what she's talking about is the other night, uh, we had a little bit owed left on the payments for my dad uh, and all his treatments and shit. Like medical aid was taken over, but we had to pay a certain amount beforehand. 
And uh, I do a lot of charity fundraisers for other people, but I fucking hate doing it when it comes to my family. And uh, Kayla was very nice enough to uh, pretty much run away with it. Like she made it to where all I had to do was sit here and take shots of tequila. And uh, I appreciate that dipshit. And play golf, wasn't it? You were playing golf? I'm still playing. Like I'm trying not to look at my TV right now because I would like to play golf right now. I, it gave me goosebumps because everybody in my chat, I had like 120 people in there on my live and they were just like, you know, but I'm like, I didn't do this for recognition, recognition, you know, of anything. I just did it because I like to help people in any way I can and, and to see smiles on people's faces. So, well, I'm, if I I'm thought, if I, if I thought you was doing it for recognition, I wouldn't have got you to do it. Well, yeah, I'm kind of an asshole, out. you know, uh, kind of, I mean, just a little I mean, bit. I can kind of be a bitch, but I don't think anybody wants to see that side of me. I don't think anybody's surprised that you can be a bitch. That's I'm like on the that's, right hair, but that's like saying everybody be surprised if Earl like chicken and waffles. Oh yes, Ponte. Bro, I'm just trying to figure out. I'm over here quiet because I'm trying to figure out who older you or the furniture behind you. God damn, bro. The furniture. I buy antiques. You know how us fucking white people like to buy shit older than us. I, hey, I don't know. Look. I don't know what to tell you. I like my goddamn antiques. It's a great backdrop. <laughs> when, I, when I go live and people see my house, they're like, oh, my God, where do you buy your furniture? I'm like, off the side Stop. of the road, garage sales, uh, flea markets, old abandoned houses, barns. I'm like, Hold oh, on. God, stop Hold. running around. We've got to get that table off the side of the road. Hold on, redhead. How the fuck Earl going to talk about my backdrop and you look like the comedy club back in the 60s? What the fuck is that? Y'all, I know y'all see. Look at Look at his shirt. Look at his shirt. <laughs> he unbuttoned his shirt so that his beard but, fit right into place. <laughs> but you know what? I, I literally was like, hey, I'm digging that shirt. This shirt is probably older than me. Vintage, baby, vintage. Well, the I just thought this was the day. This, this shirt been pulling pussy since the 60s. In that Hell room. yeah. In that room since the 50s. <laughs> hey, it's my guy. See, he makes a joke about a 50s, but he don't realize we couldn't have been friends then. <laughs> oh, oh. With that Go. shirt, he doesn't even have to talk. The ladies just come to him. Uh, yep, kind of like the old Spice guy. <laughs> hey, I'm just going to tell you, there are some things in this world that is nice about having a beard and don't giving a fuck how you dress. Women happen to like it. And I'm okay with it because if I, all I got to do is go to the flea market to buy pussy pulling clothes, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Hey, Yo, here. I'm low key jealous, man. That's why I'm talking shit like this. I'm low key jealous because you're right, man. Like, there's a lot of females that um, I see. I actually did a TikTok video asking, "What is it about beards and females liking beards?" Um, and they've been telling me they're like, "Man, grow it, just grow it." I don't want to tell nobody that I can't. <laughs> but well, honey, you just did now. You just told a bunch of people you can't grow no beard. So I try to keep what I can grow intact. So I'm a little jealous, man. I'm a little, you know, I'm a little... you know why women like dudes with beards? It's because we have it looks like we have patience to put up with their bullshit because we have patience to grow this. They don't realize that we said fuck it and was like, look, I'm tired of shaving. That's <laughs> that's about the same way you get a fucking wife to me. It's fucking, um, I'm tired of shaving. I don't know if that's the truth for some hairdressers, because me being a hairdresser. I always took care of my man's beard. He didn't have to do nothing to it. So I don't know if it's about the patience. I just think it's, I just think it's attractive. I, that's my personal opinion. But I ain't got shit to do with patience with me because I'm the one that's shaving that shit. Yeah, I don't. It's whatever. Uh, but Earl, hey, you got something to me and this fucking ginger can't compete with. You got really good skin pigments. We can't do shit with that. I'm a fucking, I have trailer park skin, bro. I will burn if I go outside and think about the sun. I don't. Yo, speaking of burning, I didn't know black people could burn. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I went to Cancun and bro, I, I literally checked myself into the hospital because I was like, yo, my skin is peeling and it hurts. I had never had a sunburn in my entire life, like at all. So I dude, I literally thought I was like breaking out or had a rash or some shit. But um when it was all said and done, I was just black as hell. So I mean <laughs> I mean, it really did. It, nothing changed. Nothing changed. I was good, obviously. 
It's okay. Sometimes I wish I hey, I want to I want to tell you a joke. <laughs> All right. So for everybody who listens to the show, they know I love black women. I love all women, but there's something about light skinned sisters that's got the curly ass hair. God damn. I'm telling you right now, you could I'll give you the keys to my truck, my bank account, whatever you want. But uh, so I have this joke that I do. I go to a lot of rap bars and I always walk up to like random people. I buy them drinks. I'll talk shit and everything. It's trying to make friends, right? Like I'm the white guy that goes to Pastor Troy concerts and Trick Daddy concerts <laughs> and got front row seats in this raising hell. Like just having a fucking blast because I just enjoy life and I enjoy good people. But I always have, I have two of the same icebreakers is one. I will walk up to folks and go, why the fuck is you here? And I'll be like, hey, look, dude, I'm one eighth African American. And they, they automatically think you're talking about your dick. But I'd be like, no, nah, bro, I'm talking about my credit score. And it has never, never, ever gone bad for me. They always have the same reaction you have. <laughs> Shit. Keep using it because uh, you're right. Hey. <laughs> you, you're 100% correct, bro. Like, you're 100%, 100% correct. <laughs> this, was, this was the other one I used to try, Earl. But this one got me uh shut down one night by a black girl and i realized that i couldn't use it no more uh you ever you ever seen the movie the help yes big fan of the movie it's fucking amazing so i'm out with some of my my honkies and there's this beautiful ebony princess that comes up to us and we're talking to her whatever and i ain't got no game i either make you laugh and you're attracted to me or you're like who's that fat bearded motherfucker talking shit like there's no middle and i said i said to this girl i said you is kind you is special you is important this bitch about punched me in my face like i'm serious like about took me out she's like that's not funny and i was like my bad fucking the movie said you thought it was funny i now know that it's not i'll never do it again the movie said that you thought it was funny. <laughs> I thought that they would think it was funny. You know, it's interesting, man, because I only, I'm, I'm quite the, the, the opposite. I only, like, I, I primarily talk and interact with white girls. Um, yeah. Couldn't have told and... that at all. How, how? How could you tell? Oh, you got, <laughs> you got a fucking Hurley hat on, dude. You eat more white pussy than I do. This is no, this is no indication of character. Sir, <laughs> sir, you have a Hurley hat on and you have fucking wristbands on, just like I do right now. You eat white pussy. You don't even season your chicken. I don't, bro, I don't even eat dark chicken at KFC, bro. <laughs> I don't know a black person to eat dark chicken at, at fucking KFC. That's, that's a stereotype I've ever heard one. Yo, um. I got a question for Kayla. Kayla, are you using your webcam as a mirror? What are we doing? <laughs> what are we I'm doing? Listening to y'all, I'm listening to y'all talk, and all I see is uh, my face. And then I see, I mean, I see y'all, but I'm just listening to y'all talk. Well, you're supposed to chime in, dickhead. Well, you said not to talk over, dickhead. All right, we'll fucking do it like it's class. Raise your hand. It's supposed to be subtle, like, social cues. Look at her getting frustrated. There she going to fix my hair. I'm about to take a motherfucking trip to Georgia. I'm about to put my hair up. I tell you what, <laughs> uh, let me go and tell you, you ever make a trip to Georgia, there's a 100% chance your hair is going to be up anyway. So you go ahead and do what you got to do. <laughs> why, because, why? Because of the temperature? Is it hot there? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. It's going to be it's gonna be real hot with your face in my lap. <laughs> At least 110. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. You heard? I'm just saying, no. we are having a big birthday party here for me next month with Catfish Cooley and Ginger Billy and people that have uh, millions of followers off TikTok. I mean, you and Earl could come, but, you know, somebody's asshole is going to be sore when they leave. I'm not saying who. Who, who, who making the mac and off. cheese? Crap? Oh, no, we don't <laughs> let white folks cook around here. White folks I, don't cook around me, bro. Hold the, I make the best homemade mac and cheese you'd ever put in your mouth. Not a goddamn <laughs> chance. Okay. You I'm, down telling, the- <laughs> I'm telling you, me and my daughter made a video on Sunday. I'm shadow banned as fuck right now. But me and her made a video on Sunday. 
and we were at a black owned restaurant that is the best seafood or anything you can get around here. And I have taught my daughter. She is, she'll be 10 years old in uh, September. I have told her there are two things you look for. We don't like going to chain restaurants. We like going to mom and pop places like at like hole in the wall places. You always look to see if it's black owned and you always see if there's a black woman cooking or black folks cooking period in the kitchen. If they're cooking in the kitchen, that's where the fuck we're going. Like you can't beat the goddamn food. You're missing. There's three points. I'm going to put you on a little something. If All you right. go to a black owned restaurant, a black person in the kitchen, if they don't have a rooster gobble hanging from the bottom of their arms, they can't cook. Are you talking so, about Bertha? Yeah. No, I, mean, I ain't talking about... <laughs> you, uh, you talking about Bertha. She got to have this. If she ain't got this, I don't want it. <laughs> I, got, I don't want... I will say, I, when I went to Tennessee uh, last year, um, I had some barbecue. I, well, the guy, the guy that I went and seen... Oh, fucking disaster. I'm not even going to go into detail on that situation. But I did eat some damn good barbecue. And it was um, um, a, a, black, a black lady or an older lady, I think. Anyways, but she did all, took care of all of it by herself. Her husband would go up there and get her pit going and stuff. But she did it all in a whole least shit. That was some of the best barbecue. And I mean, I'm, I live in Texas, so we're known for barbecue. But dear God Almighty, that and her homemade barbecue sauce. I said, shit, I'm going to move to Tennessee just for the barbecue. <laughs> i tell you, Memphis, Memphis barbecue. I don't know where you went to in fucking t in Tennessee. You go around Memphis, you get some folks that can goddamn cook. Uh, you know what? Now that I think about it, it met, like that, his dad went and picked it up. And it may, it may, because the town that I was in was close to Memphis. And he said, I drove all the way to, I think he might have said Memphis, to go pick this barbecue up. Bring it back, and I was like, I don't care where the fuck it came from. That shit was good. I'm just trying to calculate what year is the is the room that my man is sitting in. <laughs> okay. Well, well, we got an organ. We got an organ that's 1940s. We got another radio behind me. See, when you get professional and you have like an actual studio, and you have interior designers and shit, there's this thing called like, I don't know what the fuck it's called. But it's supposed to like be a theme, so that's what it's supposed, it's supposed to be vintage behind me. They not put in. You said when you get professional, black people can't get professional. <laughs> yeah, what I, I base I, I base half my life off of Dennis Rodman, Mike Tyson, and Dave Chappelle. I base it's like if they wouldn't have done it, I ain't fucking touching it. <laughs> but, I don't want. It. My, man but, uh, my management company, my management company, Red Circle, are the same people that distribute and manage Mike Tyson's hot boxing with Mike Tyson. So, like, I'm this close. Like, you can't see it. But there's a poster that's looking dead at me right now of Mike Tyson. And, like, Mike is one of my idols. And mm -hmm. if Mike likes fucked up stuff like this and they say this is good enough, if Mike was sitting here, fuck it, I'm rolling with it. My, but Mike also can't talk, so. <laughs> Look, I'm from the South, bro. I can't goddamn talk half the time. Well, start Look, talking really fast, and then with the Southern accent, half the time people are like, what did you say, Taylor? Slow it down. And I'm like, well, I came out my mama like this. I came out probably talking, 90 to nothing, and then I have got, got this accent. So, I mean, I can't talk either. I'm in the same boat. I talk super fast. And um, I've kind of talked my way out of out of gigs because of that. They'd be like, man, we can't understand what you're saying. Like, slow down. Like, <clears throat> Well, with comedy, I'll tell you, it's all about timing. Some people just, like, they overrun their jokes, like they outrun them joke, their jokes. You just got to fucking fall into them. That's what feels good. Yes, that's 100% correct, man. 100% correct. That pause, that pause sometimes, dude, can make or break a joke. Is that a rifle you got in the back? Uh, that's an AR-15 that's sitting there, but this is a guitar. I, I'm a felon. I legally can't own a firearm unless the firing pin is out of it for uh, entertainment purposes. So, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't You're be able to have it. Yeah, I'm a felon. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to have that in my background without getting shot. I can't do it. I can't do it. You Hold on. 
you don't look like you're part of the Crips or Bloods. You could show whatever firearm you fucking wanted to. No. But no, no. fucking. Really? No. No. Why is that? Man, do you not see what's happening? Do you not see what's happening to us? We out here getting killed in the streets for having water guns. Water uh, guns. I get what you're saying. I get what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, like. <laughs> I'm so, actually, you would not think this. You would not think this. I'm actually a sympathizer for, for uh, I love, like, when I say that I'm invited to the barbecue, you know how all white folks are like, oh, I'm fucking invited to the barbecue or whatever. And it's like them just pulling rank or whatever. It's not yeah. it. Like, I'm a big fan of police, but I'm also a big fan of change and making the future better for everybody. I coach girls softball. My daughter's best friend is a little black girl. I grew up playing sports with black folks. I fucking love everybody. Like, I'm not colorblind because that would be like the most racist thing to fucking say is I'm colorblind. I don't see color. Of course I fucking see color. Right. Right. But the thing is, is like I treat everybody the way I want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And I do understand there are some things that certain people, they get fucked up over and it's not fair. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, I respect that hundred percent on a serious note. Um, you don't really find, you know, genuine, that type of genuine, um, Character. No, hardly ever now. Like hardly ever. Oh my fucking god! Like I could be live, and I have people come in there, and they're like, "Do you do you believe in this? You did blah 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 all or whatever." I'm like, "Y'all, if you really just shut the fuck up and sit the fuck down for about two seconds, we all bleed red. We all bleed red. Like literally, treat people the way that you would want to be treated at the end of the day, and I guarantee you, <clears throat> this world wouldn't be such a fucking shit show and a fucking disaster. Like." That I mean, it's, the, it's insane. The problem with that, and I'm not tooting my own horn, but I, I mean, I will toot it every once in a while. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Earl and Kayla, I don't know how much y'all know about this, but I worked in country radio the past several years until I got fired last year on my birthday, September the 10th. We're coming up on the one-year anniversary of me not being a DJ. Well, one of the things I got in trouble for, I worked in country radio. I do not support the Confederate flag. I do not support the stars and bars. I have fucking people that every single day that I talk to about that and just in reference of how can you be a white Southern male with a bald head looking the way you do, wearing Wranglers, cowboy boots, all that shit, and not support this. And I explained to them, it's not that – it don't mean shit to me regardless. I don't give a fuck about it. I am 33 years old. It don't bother me either way. But what does bother me is I've got friends that when they look at it, they see hate, they see whatever. And it's like, I can't get behind it. Like you want, I got in trouble. I got death threats literally on country radio when NASCAR banned it, because I explained to a bunch of fucking people that before the swastika was adopted by Hitler, it was a symbol of peace. Before the Confederate flag was adopted by the Ku Klux Klan, it was a symbol of peace. I get that. But once a hate group adopts something, that's uh -huh. all it'll ever be known for throughout a fucking eternity. So I'm not going to sit here. There is nothing that I have on it. Nothing that I have on it that I've done in six years of being in social media and that being my livelihood that has a Confederate flag on it, and it won't. That is the realest thing I've heard tonight all day. Like that's Preach. that's say it louder for the people <laughs> in the motherfucking back. Right. Yeah. Right. I, man. I mean it like you said, it's it's very it's very rare to come across true, genuine, real people, like even, you know, despite like and some people believe what they want to believe, but they still see like, you know, this that or not. I mean, very, very rarely do you see that now. It's uh, it's sad really what it is, but what's great about it being rare though? is it makes the people that actually have a platform, and I don't have a big platform. I mean, my podcast is big and shit like that. Like, but, like, it gives you a chance. There's so many people that are tired of fake. There's so mm -hmm. many people mm -hmm. that are tired of whatever. If you're going to be a racist, be a fucking blatant racist. If you're going to be a liberal, be a blatant liberal. If you're going to be somewhere in the middle and realize that a lot of people live in the gray area of life, then fucking be honest and upfront about that. Like, I, I, I get tired, and I think that's why I've been successful, is I just don't want to sugarcoat shit no more. No. And, and see, that's, but like, but something you just said a minute ago, 
you said that so many people are tired of being fake, but so many of those people are fake. So like, I have <laughs> right. to, like fuck that shit. Like I came on TikTok, literally people begged me. They're like, Taylor, you're funny as fuck. You're real as fuck. You don't. One of my saying sayings is, I don't work for fucking Willy Wonka. I don't sugarcoat shit for fucking nobody. Like I don't beat around the bush. None of that shit. Like, but I mean, I have a heart of gold and stuff. But I'm like, so many people that are so tired of the fake shit are fake. I'm like. It's the double standards and the hypocrisy for me. I mean, <laughs> well, people but, don't want to put their careers on the line. Like, I have people that come on this show all the time. Me. I have people that come on my show all the time that's got millions and fucking millions of followers on shit and everything like that. And you understand that it becomes a business to them. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck about the followers. Like, no offense. I love each and every one of y'all that are listening to the show. If you want to download the next episode, please download it, subscribe, and follow Earl and Kayla. But the thing is, if you quit listening to me for me being me, and that's called cancel culture, then fuck you. That's what I was about to ask you, how you feel about cancel culture, bro. I got I like Well, see, that's the thing. <laughs> uh, all right, I have the number one country show in the state of Georgia for the past two years until I got fired. The number one fucking country show. And... I had made my opinions on telling Antifa to kiss my big fat ass. I made a July 4th post last year. Uh, I had same thing with the Confederate flag. There was a couple other issues. Me getting fired from country radio and having a fucking decent salary to where there were so many people that supported me when I got fired. And they were like, look, iHeartRadio is going to back you. Um, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, all this stuff, you will be on their platforms and you end up being decent on their platforms. All you got to do is get your shit out there. Mm -hmm. Cancel culture is the best and worst thing that happens. I have to tell sponsors now when they come on the show, we've had DraftKings, State Farm, fucking all these corporate sponsors that help pay my fucking salary, right? And I tell them right off the bat, it's like, look, if you go back and you read a post that I made in 2010 and you cancel me for that, don't fucking sponsor my show now. Yeah. Like, like, I fucking, I believe in growth. I believe that at 33 years old, I'm not the person I was at 23 years old. And without saying some fucked up shit and being educated and having like, I've been ignorant on several subjects in my life, but I've had people that have reached out to me the correct fucking way that have showed me uh and a prime example is i've got a really good buddy who's a songwriter in nashville he's a white dude he's a he's like my big brother and whenever the monuments the, the southern monuments started getting tore down and everything right mm -hmm. i was in fucking i wasn't upset about it but i was just like i'm a southern boy like i've looked at this since i was fucking two years old why are we tearing it down just didn't understand right right he sent me all these articles and every one of the articles said the same thing. Do either one of y'all know when like 70% of the Confederate monuments were built in the South? No idea. They were built in the seven or in the 60s. Do you know why they were built in the 60s? Uh -uh. Because that's when the civil rights movement was huge. And they were not built for any other reason but to remind African Americans, hey, just a hundred years ago, you were a slave. That's why they built these monuments in the 60s. Well, I cannot fucking support someone being slapped in their fucking face. So once I got the information on it and I realized that, hey, these were built literally to be little people, to hurt people's feelings, like, I'm not that fucking person. I wasn't raised in a racist home or with racist grandparents or anything like that. So when I find out that, hey, there were some fucking ruthless sons of bitches that wanted to remind folks that you ain't came that far. Right. Fuck that shit. You can go straight and fuck yourself. Tear them down. I don't give a shit. Man, that, look, you got a fan in me forever, bro. Like, for real, because uh, that just hearing, you know. <laughs> hey, you fan, you fan girling over there. I fan what? I said you're fan girling over there. Fan girling, at least make me a woman. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, what, no what's the saying? If you're fangirling over a dude, fan 
<coughs> See, that's what happens. You choke. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I don't mind choking. So. No, it, it, you don't look like you choke. Trust me. Exactly. You look like you. It don't matter how big it is. You're taking it. <laughs> I ain't got to worry about it being big. I promise you. The good Lord knew not to make my dick big. I'd have, I'd have gave myself full-blown AIDS by now. Yeah, you said that. I think you said that now in two of the podcasts. Uh, Sweetheart, I'm this is like my 120th episode. I probably said it in about 100 episodes. No, I was talking about with me. Like I, I said, you've right, said it, like how, how dare I? How dare? But Earl, I appreciate that, man. It's just, I don't, I try to raise my daughter to fucking love everybody. And I believe that every generation, every generation gets a little bit better. And I know they say that we're supposed to like, we're supposed to remember the past and like we're supposed to remember the, the, the the bad shit that our ancestors did. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. I believe you don't teach it. I believe you teach love and going forward. You don't mm -hmm. remind. You don't remind mm -hmm. fucking people. That, that that's my problem. There's a lot of folks now, like even the Black Lives Matter thing, dude. That was my next topic. <laughs> Black Lives Matter, and this is the realest shit I can say to you, dude. Your life matters just as much as mine. I don't believe there ought to be a fucking label put on that. Right. And if, and if somebody gets mad because I say all lives matter, whatever. Fuck you. I don't care. Your life matters as much as mine. I believe when you start putting labels on it, that's saying that yours matters more than mine. And then you get back to a whole different subject. But, mm -hmm. dude, I, d I don't believe in it. Like, I don't believe in us separating each other. I believe that is the way the government or whoever – is to just separate us and not – we could get a fucking – the South should be the worst place, the worst fucking place for racial tension, if you believe the news, right? Right, right. Go out into the streets of Georgia or the streets of Alabama, streets of Mississippi, and see how far people have came since the 60s. Now, is there still fuck-ups out there? Yes. And honestly, those fuck-ups are way past their time. And they ain't got many breasts left in their lungs. Right, right, right. But the problem is, the problem comes with it, the fact that they've given birth and they have generational, um, generational uh, mindsets and stereotypes and, you know, traits. Um, but as far as like the Black Lives Matter thing goes, for me, um, ultimately, I respect your opinion on it. But mine, I think I would feel, I feel almost as like if they were to make a movement like that, they should have followed it up with like Black Lives Matter 2 kind of thing. Um, Hold on, I'm going to pause that because that is too good of a subject for me not to get up and go piss. We're back from our first piss break of the evening. Earl, you had a very good point right here, and I want you to go in on your point where he's talking about Black Lives Matter 2. Okay, so I, th I think I know where you're going with that, and I think I like it. Um, so for me, you know, my perception has always been, you know, people are going to have their own agendas. They're going to have their own, you know, um, uh, perceptions of what they think that movement stands for, what it is. A lot of people argue the point that, oh, it's saying, like, kind of like you said, um, that my life means more than yours um, kind of ordeal. But, you know, for me, like I said, they did, they did the whole woman, the women movement, the Me Too movement as well. And I personally was behind that and respected that personally um but i feel like you know with the black lives matter people have a lot of people have made it out to be something that i don't think it was initially set to but has become now um um so when i say uh black lives matter too i really feel like that would kind of you know that would give it a whole different public appeal um obviously there will be some people in there that feel as though okay, it's still what it is to them, <laughs> but uh, anything than just the state Black Lives Matter. Um, I think that too carries a lot of weight and a lot of volume um, by adding it to, you know, the movement and message itself. Yeah, I don't, I don't knock that argument. Understand, like, there's nothing that I can ever say to completely understand your argument or anybody of your, your culture's argument. Like, there's mm -hmm. never nothing I can ever do, right? But from the outside looking in, I think where a lot of people get fucking butt hurt or whatever is because I just you you know you're obviously a comedian, 
You ever right. listen to Carlo, Carlos Mencia? Yep. Carlos Mencia had his bit 15 years ago when he was doing Mind of Mencia. Mm-hmm. And it was the way that you kill racism is you stop talking about it. You stop separating the two. Like you quit reminding people how you said a while ago, you've got generational, like generational racists or whatever. Right. The reason why I don't talk about that kind of stuff with my daughter is because I don't want her to ever know about it. Right. And the way that you don't like, you should not, it gets to a point in time that if you're going to kill something, you have to leave it behind. It has to be, it don't need to be part of the history anymore. That's the only way because it does not fucking matter, dude. It does not matter what you bring up about your history or what <laughs> I bring up about my history, right? Right. You're like, me and you are from two different parts of uh, the country. You're in Texas. I'm over in Georgia. Mm-hmm. And there's this old joke that people in Georgia appreciate people from Alabama because they make us look better. And people in Alabama <laughs> appreciate the motherfuckers from Mississippi because they make them look better. Right. All right. So, but it's because we used to be fuck ups. We're not like a bunch, 99% of us don't see the world that way no more. And unless you talk about it, unless you keep bringing it out, I think the, I think what happens is when you talk about it and you bring it out, it lights a fire under people's asses who didn't know right. about it in the first place. That's true. I've never thought about it like that. Never. Um, um, were you about to ask something, Kayla? I was. Well, you were talking, but go ahead. You you say what you're going to say, and then I'll chime in. Um, <laughs> oftentimes, I think you know about. Uh, if we if there ever come a day where we're where, where we describe someone as human rather than saying like um i feel like it goes hand in hand with what you said josh about how we how we see one another in terms of a lot of times when we're describing people it's typically like i feel like the, the people often say like uh, it was that black girl or that white guy or that you know such as descriptions like that rather than you know um if I were talking to someone of my color, I would say, yeah, man, he, it, it, it would be more personal. It would be more personalized. And I feel like us using, you know, race as a, I feel like it will never, racism will never, prejudice will never end as long as we keep making it relevant. Um, and uh, in our speech and the way we talk and, you know, just different things that we do on a day-to-day basis. So, I, I'm, I'm completely agree, completely agree. Um, because we're not we are not born like this. <laughs> like we I have I have twin girls, they're two years old, and when we go out, they speak to everybody, every single person. So, you know But, but see that's that's where you're that's what you're doing right though. You see what I'm saying? Like that that's like I don't like I'm I'm gonna touch a little bit on what Josh said, like here here, um uh, he was a little bit back whereas like I go and I'm only comparing this because I don't you know get asked this in, in public but on live and stuff every now and then I, I, I I'll get a shit ton of people are like uh do you believe in the whole black black lives matter movement thing and I, I mean I I've always said what he said which is all lives matter to me because I don't think there should be a label specifically on one certain you know thing like that but but you're doing something right, whereas, I, I mean, I do the same with my children. I'm like, you know, it, it costs zero dollars to be kind to people. Talk to every, you know, uh, other than if they look like a creeper in some kind of white van or something and they're trying to kidnap, you know. But talk to, you know, be nice to everybody. Be kind to things like that. But I don't know. It's so, like, shit's just so crazy now. I'm, I'm scared to think that if we'll ever even, no, I don't right. know. There will be. I'm telling y'all, it will be. You're you're about one generation away from it. <clears throat> you're you're one generation, maybe two, away from racism. Racism will never be completely dead, but the way that we see racism now, it's over with. <laughs> I mean, the the reason why, and I'm throwing my my fucking people under the bus here, right? So anybody that's listening right now, I'm throwing my kind under the bus. I'm talking about Southern people who are granddaddies that we grew up obsessing with because they were our heroes. Our granddaddies might have dropped the N-bomb here or there, and we thought growing up that was the way it was supposed to be. 
Like, and it ain't right. It took me being – my granddaddy's wasn't like that. That That's probably why I'm more progressive than a lot of fucking people is my granddaddy's taught me that you love every fucking body and you treat them the same and you do not treat a man – you treat a man for what's not the color of his skin but the contents of his character. Mm-hmm. That's what I've been taught my entire life. Like, that is – but the thing is – my daughter and so many people around here are starting to understand that in the next two generations, I don't know how many people I actually really think about this. Mixed children were not a thing until the 1900s. You didn't see it. You didn't see it. Right. All right. Now look how diverse our culture is, how our kids are, everything you physically and like DNA based might not be mixed with whatever, but mentally you are. So that's even like me being a fucking high schooler and wanting to listen to fucking Petey Pablo and DMX and fucking all this shit, right? My daddy didn't do that, right? You're you're getting changed a little bit at the time. Culture, it transcends. And what's going to happen in the next fucking 30, 40 years is people are going to quit saying one thing and it's gonna all of a sudden be we're all equal it took way too goddamn long or it's gonna take way too long because we're not there yet but people are people are eventually gonna be like and it's a lot to social media to be honest with you Mm -hmm. and i hate fucking social media besides for this aspect but it is gonna be where all of our kids are gonna be cool with one another without us ever having to say a word sadly you are so right like I mean, social media alone, I, I really do hate social media. And I mean, some people be like, oh, yeah, right. But what they don't understand is like when I started the whole TikTok thing, you know, I had a Facebook and Instagram and, and all that. But it's uh, like I do it. I do it out of like, um, like, I guess all, all the good that I have, I have brought. It's which therapeutic and it's about. fun. Mm-hmm. But, and it is it's very therapeutic in, in, in a in a sense because i mean I, I was like if rock bottom had a basement i was renting that motherfucker for fucking expensive when i started tiktok and I, it blows my mind to get all these messages from all kinds of people saying that i've done this for them and i've been able to do this and that and i'm like but what they don't know is like they you know they've done the same for me but i still hate social media at the end of the day if i really think about it i absolutely hate social media so I guess I'm the lone ranger because I absolutely love social media. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. Social like, media I, is like my freaking, I love it. I love it. Like, How long like, have you been trying to like be a comedian and everything like, in social media? Social though? media social media is running a close tie with my kids. <laughs> How long have you been trying to do like become a comedian with social media though? Man, it's been, it's been, so I would say serious since I started TikTok. Um, when was which, that? Which literally, that? which literally was the start of, was like March of this year. Okay. So. I got six years in this from mm-hmm. used to being called the bearded bastard on social media, having a lot of followers to work in the radio to this. You give it about two years, you'll fucking despise it. <laughs> so, okay, let, 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 let me say this. Because when you it say so. It's very overwhelming. When you say so, when you say social media, though, because I've been on social media since two thousand nine, two thousand eight. So, are you talking about social media in general? Or are you talking about you know just doing it as doing comedy? Um, oh no no media? no no. So, uh, first off, do not judge yourself as a comedian uh, through social media. You can't do it. Oh yeah, I got you. Y- you can't. And two, like it's just social media in general. You, you got to understand, more people get views than they get likes, okay? Absolutely. All right, so each one of y'all know that you'll get more views on a post than you'll actually get likes on it, right? So social mm-hmm. media gives people the, the false confidence sometimes that they're succeeding mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. their amount of views. But you got to realize, if you got 100,000 views and only, let's just say, five. 5,000 of them like the video. You have 95,000 haters or people who did not get your content. You cannot, social media does not define, you were supposed to define your social media 
Social media isn't supposed to define define you. you. Right. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. And I, I agree with that one hundred for I one hundred percent. I agree with that. Um, <clears throat> where some people they they take it and they run with it. Their head gets so damn big, can't walk through a damn door front, and I'm like. Oh my Lord have mercy, but they're letting their social media platforms define them. And I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I wouldn't be able, I can't say that I wouldn't, I'm, I would quit TikTok tomorrow because I wouldn't. Because, <laughs> because I, you I love would. it. I mean, yes, I do. And, but at the same time, there's times where I've gone days without going live and I've had hundreds of messages like, where are you? I have refreshed my shit. You're not here. It's 9 30. And I'm like, God, Jay, like y'all, y'all rely on my entertainment for y'all's life, like an insanely amount. Like it's it's crazy. I'm, up, I'm gonna blow your mind right here. Growing up, what was your favorite TV show? One oh, what H. Was, <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck he just said. You said one H. I said what age? <laughs> oh no no, it really doesn't matter with the I with, with the metaphor I'm gonna throw to y'all. Sorry. This any show remember. any show you enjoyed watching? It really Barney. Was. All right, Barney. Okay. Oh, shut the, the hell that, up! No, you did not, motherfucker. Say Barney. You picked the Barney's one that does. One okay, fuck this shit. We're gonna say Friends. I'm kidding. You both fucked it up. Gonna, I was gonna say I love Lacey or something, but still, still don't care. All right. Do you know how often? Do you know how often to this day, or fucking sixty years ago? Do you know how often your favorite show had a new episode? Once Every a week. Week, right. So the people that oh, end up yeah. being the people that end up being really successful at this shit, you get about once or twice a week from them on social media. That's because if you do it every single day, one, you get completely burnt out on it. And two, you don't give people nothing to look forward to. The reason why we all have our favorite shows is because they drag us along. Like, you cannot, if you do lives every single night, you are draining yourself. You just don't know you're draining yourself, but you're taking to where you might have 10 minutes of good fucking entertainment out of an hour to where why don't you do it once a week where you've got 60 minutes of entertaining shit out of an hour. That's why I don't do it every night. I do it, no. fuck, I don't do it every night. That is freaking genius, man. Like, cause you're right. I mean, no, it makes a lot of sense unless you yeah. like Kayla. And and my life is legit. Like, I can't make the shit up that happens in my life every day. I could probably tell four crazy stories that has happened in my day every single damn day because literally I cannot make this shit up in my life. I'm like, what did I do in my past life to like have so much? Yeah, but how long do you sit on lives every night? And I know you make good money off of it, but how long do you sit on there? Uh, sometimes it just depends. Like last night, I was only on there for, I'm gonna say at the max an hour. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. I, Think I about it. If, but, if that if that's your max and you're doing it every night, that's at least seven hours a week. Why not combine that all into one or two, three or four, something like that? But have it set up to where people knew. Look at this. How many people right now that y'all follow are like a shit ton, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why not set it up for once or twice a week at a certain time, just like it's a TV show, and be like, everybody knows, hey, let me go listen to the rest of these people the rest of the week. But at this time slot, I can tune into Earl. I can tune into Kayla. And you're going to get the maximum viewers. And it's just going to be better for you all the way around. I will say that I, did, I, had, I have been thinking about that for a while because, like, I mean <laughs> – not saying I am going to be in any type of relationship anytime soon, but um, social media can also harm and hurt a relationship in, mm -hmm. in some ways. And um, I like, there's no way I'd be able to do this all the time if I, if I were in a serious relationship. But I mean, social media can hurt that anyway, whether you go live, don't do what, or whatever the hell you do on your social I'm media gonna, platform. I'm going to tell y'all something that you have to learn. I had a guy come in here on Saturday that I did a show with. And I had to explain to him that if social media is going to be your life, you have to be a character. It has to be you turned all the way up to 10. If you don't know how to let off and just fucking be you for four or five days, it's going to fucking kill you. It's going to drive you insane. I tell every single girl that I get to know, 
whether it ends up being whatever. Like, look, this is my life. But you have the ability to come, hang around, be here, see that the stuff that I'm saying, I'm shit talking. It is not me being real. It is me turned up to 10 and knowing what the people that listen to me like. If you can't deal with that, then fucking go on somewhere. But the ones that do and they actually get to know me and we have fun and hang out, they're the ones that why people don't see. They're sitting in the fucking background hanging out realizing I'll tell Kayla all day I'm fixing a face fucker, but I'm going home with old girl and Kayla lives in Texas. But I don't have a girlfriend, and I would like to do bad things to Kayla and many others listening to the show <laughs> right now. See, that's how you got to do it. You see, you don't know. I say it all the time. Ain't nobody going to know that I'm engaged or fixing to get married until this pops up on social media one day. You have to set your – if you want a career in social media, you have to separate what you're doing right now to what you do every single day. That's good. That's a good point, man. Because um, a lot of times I hop on my social media and I'm not going to lie, man. I'm like, God dang, I don't want to do it today. Like, but for whatever reason, you know, um, I have this thing. Sometimes, in my you do it. Sometimes you do it, not even knowing that you need to. I think it's just deep down. You, you, it, like you want to because maybe, you know, you've had a bad day or something's gone wrong right. or whatever. Or you just want to talk about something. But uh, no, there's plenty of times where I'm like, Yep. Just drains the shit out of me. Like, <laughs> you know, do you know why or, it drains? Or my, the number one thing that I get is don't even try and message Kayla. Don't message her. This. So I'm like, if y'all can remotely see my DMs, I would hand my phone off, both accounts, everything, take it all. You can answer. Deal, you deal with it. Like, it's exhausting. Yes. Yes. You can't. I'm telling you right now. People are going to call you an asshole. They're going to say that you don't fucking respond or whatever. Yes. But I'll tell I you one, give a shit, though. one thing, one thing you got to understand. You have to post stuff that you believe in and let it go for good or bad. You do not read the comments to your inbox. Your inbox is what you make it. If I have my shit set on where I have a private account, like on not private account, but if I'm not friends with you, your messages don't show up to me. Mm -hmm. It ain't me being ugly. And I make the fucking statement all the time, whether I'm on live or whatever. Look, there's a good chance I could see your message or couldn't see your message. If I'm supposed to see it, it's going to pop the fuck up and it's, I'll see it. But otherwise, just understand <laughs> there's fucking another thousand people that I'm ignoring. And I don't mean that to sound like an asshole, but I just don't see it. Yeah, and I'm so glad you said that. But I'm so yeah. glad you said that though, because so many people are like, oh yeah. And they did. But at the same time, it may not sound, and I don't want people that, that listen to this, because there's a shit ton of my people that follow me have subscribed and listened to, to the podcast now that I've done, you know, quite a few. But if I want, if I want to respond, I will respond. If I don't, I don't. And I, and sometimes I honestly didn't even see a message or a text message or a DM or whatever the hell it is. And I honestly didn't. But nine times out of ten, I'm like, some of these freaking messages, I'm like, you've got to be shitting me. Yeah. No. It no. is. So the, no. It's not that if I want to respond, I'll respond. It's I'm not going to read your messages. Like, I don't have a, enough time. Yeah, I don't. And that's, I think that's, what I, that's what I meant is when I said that. Like, I'm just not going to, like, m more than likely, I'm just not going to, I'm not, I'm not even going to read it. But, but, I mean, but Kayla, in all fairness, you are a woman. The messages you yes. get are way different than the messages yes. I get. Yes. Whatever. You probably Absolutely. get a you get a fucking proposal once a week. And there's oh, like there's I don't like, get it. like oh let's talk about that. I got a good topic we could talk about real quick. So literally, when it comes to like compliments and messages and shit, it gets so damn old. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times. You're so hot. You're so sexy. You have dime. You're this, you're that. And I'm like, at this point, like, I, you know, whatever. Or, oh, um, redheads are, and I'm like, I, it's so, it's like on repeat. If I'm going to get a compliment from somebody or a message, I want it to be like a true, genuine compliment. Like, other than physical features. At this point, my God, everyone thinks I'm hot and sexy and fine. And For sexy. real. So I God, asked they me. take me home. And ask me what kind of <laughs> ask me what my last book was that I read. <laughs> See, I'm completely different. Guys, if you're listening to the show, I'm gonna tell you right now, 
how you get laid. This is what assholes do, and this is why women like assholes. Kayla, I understand. Oh, this is gonna be fucking great. Let's it is. I understand that about you and any woman that's attractive on social media. So if I want to slide in your inbox, I'm going to say something backhanded. You never, ever compliment. You compliment, right, but, right. but you give it with an insult. Guys, if you're trying to bang Kayla or any other girl. Oh, the list is long, Josh. The list is long. It's okay. because Pick a, I, pick a I, number. I, 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 all I can tell you. But she was trying to would never happen. There you go. Let's just throw that out. All I can tell you guys that if you were me, and you had 30 minutes with Kayla, I could get you laid. But listen to me. I mean that it's okay. I am very confident, but you like it. Otherwise, you won't be I was going to say, that's one of the things that I, I absolutely. There you go. See? Really love about well, it's about. obvious it's that I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Otherwise, what you won't be what grinning like a jackass eating briars. What is, uh, this? what is this? Tinder premium? What are we on? <laughs> we are. Hey, all you got to do is subscribe one more month and you get fucking what's really about to happen. I'm telling you. Okay. Anyway. It, anyway. All I'm saying is, like, Kayla, if you hear me talking shit to Kayla, you got to give them backhanded compliments. Compliments. It's like, oh, you good looking for a ginger. Or everybody else is like, damn, she's a dime piece. You'd be like, bitch, you like a nickel and a half. Like, they like it more if you come at them sideways than you do this being like, oh, yeah. Why is I, that? I, okay, I, like, I, I need to, you go, I, I need, I need to know why. Because that is so true, Josh. Like, I will see, uh, with, I will see women on TikTok. True. I will see women on TikTok, and they will ignore every comment in the, on their video, but they will, they will acknowledge and make a post about a comment that says something bad about them because like, they want to prove <laughs> because they want to prove their insecurities wrong they want to prove that whatever you're saying is not fucking real that's why you can tell a woman i had the same hashtag for every oh, woman that i, I hit know. on the same i had the same <laughs> hashtag and all it says is hashtag obsessed and if you end up in my inbox there's a chance and if you don't then i realize I'm just going to be fucking obsessed from a distance until the next bitch on TikTok shaking her ass makes a video. And then I'll like her. Like, that's the thing is you have to be backhanded. Women don't like the nice guys unless you have been no. completely fucked over. Last guy is finished last. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The only way women uh, I'm sorry, like, hello. I'm the only woman here, and I'd like to speak on this. I know. Look, I'm on fixing. Don't worry. Let, let me finish this comment there, and I got you there. Travelocity gnome. Uh, anyway, Ooh. it's okay. You can gnome home with me anytime you want. I just to. love how every time he says something, he says it's okay. Because <laughs> you like it. See, you oh, don't fuck just... me up. No, G women, women do not like people kissing their ass. You all want somebody that is playful and roast you. You don't ever want the nice guy. None of until you have been divorced. And until he has fucked you over, yes. and until whatever. The only nice guys that end up getting married are the nice guys with the nice bank accounts and the nice dicks. That's Out, it. Outside of that, oh, Jesus, nice, guys, get my turn. nice guys don't get <laughs> fucking no attention. And go. <laughs> uh-uh. Uh-uh. Okay, so I've got two examples right now. <clears throat> so the other night I was on live, and there's this guy that – has had a thing for me. I'm not naming names, but it's definitely had a thing for me. And I'm talking blew my comment section up on live. And I was like, I don't like, I don't, I'm not, I haven't made plans, whatever this weekend, blah, 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 da, da, da. And I said, but more than likely, you are literally like you're a try hard. Like that is the most unattractive thing is making yourself look desperate to me. I'm speaking for my, you know, myself to make yourself look absolutely desperate. Like, oh my God, I'd do anything to come and hang out with you. I just want to drink beer with you. And I'm like, at this point, I don't even, I want you to get the fuck off my live. <laughs> but then in my DMs, if I've heard it, once I've heard it a hundred million times, guys coming up in there, hey, yo, I think you're fun as fuck. Can I get that Snapchat? I'm like, first of all, it's called Snapchat. Secondly, uh, no, probably not. Because if you thought anything interesting about me, you wouldn't ask for just my Snapchat. You'd probably be like, hey, 
um, this, that, or another. Here's my number. Well, this guy came, he's from Texas locally, and he came into my into my DMs and he said, Hey, um, I know you know you probably aren't gonna just offer me your Snapchat, but you have a freaking badass personality, you're funny, blah blah blah. And I feel like you would be somebody that I could add on Snapchat to send funny shit to. I said, Fucking finally, a guy comes into my DMs and wants my Snapchat for other than just pity pics or whatever, blah blah blah. And now I have a date with him on Saturday. I'm going on with a legit real date. But and if I was, to, all right, so let's play this game though. So but not all women are the same is what I'm okay. trying to say. Well, I definitely don't like the overly nice guys, but I don't on, like hold, the complete hold, douchebag dickheads. Hold on, Cracker Queen. Give me a second. Let's just say, let's just say, saltines, that if I was to come to Texas right now and I was to say, hey, I ain't got nothing to do Friday night. Would you like to come hang out with me Friday night? Would you go out with the asshole that's probably going to try to slap you on the ass, get you drunk, and hang out, or would you rather go out with the nice guy? Um, well, the no, 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 no. Old Taylor, old Taylor would have probably went with the more fun, uh, asshole, very rude, you know, shit like that. But I realized, like, at the end of the day, after I hang out with that person, because and this is a this is a, I guess with me getting older and stuff like Do that. Do you hear how long it's taken occurred. to answer this question? Listen, because of a recent situation that has occurred with somebody, I'm like, it's not that fun anymore. It's not fun anymore to go and hang out with that per that type of guy and then just to be fucking treated like shit afterwards. Like I'd rather hang out with somebody that I could potentially still have a good time with because I am a fucking good time, no matter you know what. But I don't, I'm, I'm over the whole. Kay, Kay, Kayla, hold on, hold, hold on, baby. Hold on, baby. You got really in depth there. It's a yes or no. Women overcomplicate situations. If I Always. was to come, if I was to come my ass to Texas and I was going to say, Hey, Kayla, I'm here for a couple of days. I'd sure like to take your pretty ass out on Friday night. Well, would you say, say it like that? Would you say, would you say, <laughs> yeah, yes? when you say it like that, you're like, oh, okay, cool. Okay, but Sounds would you great. say, when do I need to be ready? Thank you. That, <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, fellas, that's how you talk. Tell them they're pretty. Oh, yeah, there you go. Here's your smooth pickup lines by Josh Perry. Do you look at, look at me? There, I have no. Like smooth, does the good Lord said he could make me funny or he can make I mean, me smooth? And I'm promise you, he gave me he gave me where I'm funny because I cannot be smooth. I will trip, I will hold your hand on the dance floor and trip and bust my ass. Nah, brother, you ain't gonna fall. You got you you got two buttons buttoned up. Anybody with two buttons buttoned up is steady on their feet. <laughs> you, the women around here have spoiled me. I don't have to button my shirt no more. And I am full blown fat. Like I can walk into a bar with two thirty hanging out of a fucking button up like this. And you know what? Somebody's gonna be like, "Like you're cute," and I'm like, "Bitch, you blind." He wouldn't even have to speak. What? Two what? hours to walk into a bar, and he was sitting there looking just like the hat backwards, the freaking shirt. The shirt alone. When I seen his Snapchat uh, story before I, we even did this, I said, "Holy motherfucking hell, that shirt! Jesus Christ, I need it." First of all. I want to wear Very cute. it. I think it's a Man. I think it's a lesbian shirt, but some some guy wore this real well. I'm a dollar baby. No, I'm telling you. I love it. I want it, it. But I'm telling you, it's because I'm funny. I know that I'm not the prize pig at the fair, and I don't give a shit about that. It's just when you get around me and you like fucking get to have a good time, it changes the ball game. I want people say that about me. Believe it or not. What about Earl? Them. What they say, Earl? What's your relationship status? Whatever I feel like when I wake up in the morning. This is my guy. <laughs> <laughs> I happen. I happen to have the same motto. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> God damn, oh, Earl, man. Earl just might have had the best comment of the whole goddamn show. <laughs> <laughs> However, I feel in the morning. <laughs> That's good. But anyway, y'all, uh, I think that's it for this one because I think we went an uh, hour plus. Uh, yeah. But Earl, uh, I got to line it up with you. I got a guy that me and him was talking about you earlier today. 
That's why I messaged you. Uh, he's a friend of mine from Alabama. He's a creator. He's got like 400 something thousand followers. Uh, in the next couple of days, I want to get you and him on the show together. Uh, he's also a black comedian. And uh, I think you too. I think if y'all fucking hit it off and y'all get to just go ham on me. And I just want to see if I can hold my own. I want- <laughs> yeah, I didn't, on this live, I really, I really just felt out the vibe to see how it was, um, yeah. which I did- freaking loved. I loved this. You um, did a very good job, man, for your first time. <laughs> um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't go all in. But next time, I might have to go in on him, though. I might have to go in on him. That's Not fine. Sure I, who want- he is. <laughs> I want you to. I want you to. Because oh. I want, because my white ass want to be sit here like sitting back, looking like I'm watching the NBA Finals. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I want to see two black guys going at it hard. Two black like, men, <laughs> like the white man sitting on the sidelines. Like that's all hey, I want just, to see. Just like Kevin Love. <laughs> I, I am Kevin Love. That's the I am Kevin Love and and uh, Luke Wilson. That that is what I am. That is all I am. <laughs> You said Luke Wilson. You talking about Luke Walton? Fuck, <laughs> <Well>, yes. <laughs> See, this is how racist he is. He knew who the fuck I was really talking about. I was thinking about Owen Wilson's broke-ass no. <laughs> and, and Walton, Bill Walton's son. I, I really appreciate you for up. having me on here, man. Seriously. Hey, by the way, uh, I have to say this to the people that I prejudge. Um, I always do. Uh, I'm a very real person. I try to be a sincere, a sincere person. And uh, you're way funnier than I thought you were going to be. You're incredibly nice and intelligent. <laughs> and uh, my thing is, did you you never know what you're going to get from somebody? That's because that's video. because yeah, it's because I was black. You 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 no, it, because no, it's because my weird. blackness. It's okay. Usually, it's okay. usually, usually, the black folks on here are. Did you know black people were smart? <laughs> I did. I did. I also quit buying y'all uh, like life jackets when we went to the lake because I got y'all figured out. <laughs> oh my god! You can say that if you say <laughs> to a comedian. Oh, I know. I'm laughing. I'm saying like, oh my god! Like, never mind. Hey, first off, first off, if what? I put if I put hot sauce on everything and I grew up putting too much sugar in my Kool Aid, I think I can make half these backhanded comments. You, I fully, per, I fully agree. Like I was to talk about this. Or I went on Earl to attack me because it, it was supposed to be backhanded towards Earl. Did you? Did you? You say you stopped buying the? You stopped buying us life jackets. Yeah, no more life jackets. Oh, so you want us to drown? All no, right. I want, no, we want you to. Swim. No, you want us. No, you want us to drown. Look. <laughs> If y'all can fucking handle the underground, I won't ever drown. I have permanent flotation devices. <laughs> Black folks don't even take baths, bruh. We don't take baths. We only take showers, <laughs> and we do that with caution, man. Like we can't, we we can't that, be around nothing. <laughs> Lord, I'm just gonna go ahead and ask yeah. you forgiveness for I say this joke. That's oh. because y'all are so used to the high-powered uh, hoses from the civil rights movement. Everybody likes showers. Nobody likes baths. See, he's laughing. Wait, he don't what? know whether to laugh or not. I know. I really don't. I really don't. You I should, really you have. You should tell me that was half-ass racist, but it was funny. Hey, as a comedian, I mean, I don't take, I don't take nothing to heart, man. It's, it's, it's don't. It is because I, I want you. Look, I want, <laughs> I want people on this show to know that you can come here. And this is a free, like a free space. I want right. people to pick on me and the shit that I might, they assume that my great ancestors did because maybe they fucking did. Are you partially Amish? Amish? Absolutely yeah. not. I know. <laughs> right. look, at, look at me. We wanted fucking air conditioning as soon as it became available. My kind was like, you know what? Fuck the sun. No. We might have had like an Amish brother. Like, oh, say Terry, but that motherfucker was like, hey, look, these guys over here got fucking cold air blowing in their window. Hey, but you know what? Some Amish women, they can fucking cook and bake. Lord have mercy. Yeah, they, they also stink. They also don't wear shoes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> their pussies look I like... Love y'all. Their pussies look like I'm my literally chin. in the worst about shoes. I got I lose my shoes at the fucking That's bar. Trash. Like 
Well, you know what? I look like good trash, so. Yeah, no. That's called garbage. Earl, drop your social media links because we're finna get off here. <laughs> You're, good, right, trash. Y'all. You're good trash. You're good trash. Thanks again. Thanks again for having me. My name, uh, my social media links, everything is at Earl the Comedian. Every single platform is at Earl the Comedian. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, everything. Um, so, yeah, like I said, J- Josh has been all, look, I almost called you Jason. Look at that. You must be it. You must it's be Jason <laughs> Terry. That's all you could fucking remember. Well, there's a like- guy one time named Jason Terry in the NBA, and he was a good white kid. Right. No, he wasn't. He was a black guy. That's right. <laughs> That's what, he was actually he was black as hell, actually. So that's how did him? <laughs> see, he he played with Luke Wilson. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I appreciate y'all having me on here. It was fun. It was fun. Um uh I look forward to the next one. And Kayla, tell everybody bye. Uh bye, everybody. Um my TikTok is at KayleBrienne91, the backup is at KBRI91, and then my Instagram is um, K- KYLE15. Sorry, I almost forgot. Earl, you did anyway. drop all your social media links, right? Yeah, all of them's at yeah, The name is all the same. Okay, well, that's what we want to make sure. Calm down, honky. We wanted to make sure all of it was the same because I like Earl. Anyway, thank y'all for listening to Politics, Religion, and Whiskey. I promise y'all on the next show, I will try to be sober.